Part 5 Yes Let's Begin Chapter 9 Decisive Battle at the Academy The lights in the gym would go on, making Issei jump a bit, while Kaneko seemed unsurprised. Come out, Grimoris, we know you're here. The female voice's order made Issei and Kaneko come out of their hiding place, seeing how four girls were waiting for them. Issei just looked at them with some surprise, not knowing exactly what to say. Three are pawns, the one in front is a rook. Kaneko's simple and cold comment would make Issei look at her carefully. Issei would bump his fists with a defiant smile on his face. In that case, leave the rook to me and you take care of the pawns, Kaneko. Kaneko looked at him with an expression that said, Are you an idiot? causing Issei to look at her in confusion. You don't have a lot of combat experience, so I don't think you can take hits well, and we're talking about a rook. Basically, its forte is stamina and or physical strength. Issei blinked in confusion, not understanding why Kaneko didn't want him to fight her. I know it very well, that's why I want to fight against her. Kaneko continued to look at him as if he was an idiot, making Issei start to get nervous. How much longer are you going to keep talking? The woman in front would ask, with a bit of irritation in her words. Issei and Kaneko would look at her in some surprise. If you don't come to us, the woman would give them a creepy smile. Then we will come to you. The four women charged towards the stage at top speed. Kaneko only got into a defensive position when she saw the three pawns charge at her. No, Kaneko thought, knowing that the tower's target was Issei. Issei gritted his teeth as the woman began to raise her cane to hit him hard. The brunette prepared to defend himself. It was prepared, and got ready. How slow. Issei would think with wide eyes as he activated the gauntlet to block and grab the cane almost without difficulty, to then pull her towards him and give her a strong blow to the abdomen that separated her feet from the ground. The woman's eyes widened at her in shock, spitting up a large amount of blood. Issei would take a step back, surprised at himself as he watched as the woman writhed on her knees in pain. Kaneko and the other three women looked at what had happened in great surprise. Quote dot dot dot, when did he acquire such strength and reflexes? Kaneko would think in genuine astonishment. The woman would look at him with great contained rage as she rose with great difficulty from the ground. Tiamat was much faster and stronger, Issei would think as a small smile began to form on his face. Boost. The woman would attack Issei again with her cane without paying attention to the speaking voice. With the new strength obtained, Issei deflected the attack with all his might using the gauntlet, causing the woman's staff to fly for not supporting such force exerted against him. She didn't have more than a second to be surprised that her weapon went flying, since Issei punched her hard in the face that deformed her face a bit, and then gave her a strong kick in the chest that sent her flying against the wall, another end of the gym. When she collided with the wall, she kicked up some dust and spat out, falling to the ground with a thud and becoming completely unconscious. Right now, the three razor pawns were looking at Issei with some terror, feeling how a cold sweat covered his entire face. Kaneko didn't miss the distraction and proceeded to give one of the girls a strong blow to the neck, which was heard as a big bang. The two remaining women turned to look at Kaneko, gritting their teeth tightly. Issei isn't the only one who hits hard. It would be Kaneko's simple words, giving the two girls a blank look. Rook, Shui, Pawn, Kira, of House Razor have been defeated. Issei would watch in some surprise as the two downed girls disappeared with a green light from the gym. Issei, go. Kaneko's simple words would make Issei look at her carefully. I'll take care of both. Issei nodded without question, running out of the place, while multiple, boost, could be heard, because his emotions were a bit wild for obvious reasons. After Issei left the building, he took a couple of steps until he saw how a big light was projected on his head. Knowing that this indicated trouble, the brunette quickly defended his head with the gauntlet, while another boost was heard in the process. The magical attack hit his gauntlet with great force, slightly sinking his feet into the ground. Issei gritted his teeth in surprise as he saw that the fire attack was cracking her gauntlet. Finally, the attack was halted as the gauntlet shattered into a thousand pieces, resetting Issei's power count causing him to fall to the ground from sudden loss of strength. Oh, did you manage to withstand my attack? That's pretty incredible for a low-class devil. The wavy purple-haired woman would speak, looking at Issei with a bit of surprise. Issei wasted no time and jumped to his feet, 
activating his gauntlet again. This time, the boosts ran even faster than the previous time, due to the somewhat desperate feeling that emerged from him because of that woman. She's not like the others. She'd better be very careful, oh one of those attacks could do me a lot of damage. Issei would think, clenching her teeth tightly as she reached her tenth boost very quickly. Hum, the woman hummed to herself. In that case, a considerably larger fireball would appear on her staff. I'll use a slightly stronger attack. The woman's eyes would widen in a sinister way, causing Issei to quickly go on his guard. It's not a good option to block it. Issei thought sharply, preparing to jump when he launched the attack. Just as he pointed the staff in her direction, a large electric yellow magic circle appeared in the green sky, causing the woman to widen her eyes in shock and change the direction of the attack at the last second, sending it into the sky. A huge bolt of lightning descended from the magic circle in the direction of the woman, who collided hard with the large fire bomb, causing both attacks to cancel each other out in a nice explosion. Jujuju. Issei recognized that voice instantly, making a huge smile break out on his face as a familiar figure appeared flying in front of him. Akano, I think it's time to have some fun, Akano would comment, licking her finger in a sadistic and lewd way. Issei, go quickly to where Kiba is. Issei would grab his ear upon hearing Rias's voice. He recently trapped three razor pawns in the trap, but the containment circle was too obvious. They'll more than likely go his way and break through the barrier, oh they'll wait for him outside for an ambush. Issei just nodded seriously and ran towards Kiba's position, leaving Akino and Kaneko alone. Line jump. Two of Razor's pawns have been eliminated. Issei would look up from her in some surprise. That means Kaneko made it. The chestnut would think with a smile. His thoughts were interrupted when he collided with someone. Oh, it's you. Issei would exclaim with a smile when he saw that it was Kiba. Where are the enemies? He would ask her seriously. Kiba would point behind him. I already took care of them. Issei looked behind him to see how three women were lying on the ground, disappearing in a flash every second. That is amazing, Issei would exclaim with a smile, to then look at the trees seriously. But this isn't over yet. Get out of there, we already know you're here, Issei would yell. After a few seconds, a large curtain of dust would lift, revealing a brown-haired woman who had a pair of bandages on her hair. I am Razor's horse, and because of my loyalty to him I swear that I will crush them. Although his words were threatening, his innocent tone made him less serious. Kiba would take a few steps forward, pointing his sword at the woman. I'll take care of her, Issei. Issei just nodded. Issei stayed behind Kiba, watching his movements. Everything is different now, Issei would think, blinking in surprise. Before, Kiba's movements seemed quite fast to me, Issei would comment, seeing how the sparks came out every time Kiba clashed swords with his rival. Now it's not slow, but it's not fast either, it's normal. Issei would look down at his gauntlet upon hearing another surge. Maybe it's due to the augmentations and training. He would wonder, surprised at himself. They're outnumbered. Issei would watch as a woman smaller than him appeared, bearing quite a resemblance to razors. We'll crush you first, and then we'll deal with the knight. Who are you? Issei would blatantly point at her. My name is Ravel Phoenix. I am Razor's younger sister, and his bishop. She would answer the woman in a fine and proud way, denoting her noble origin. After Ravel introduced himself, Razor's remaining pieces surrounded him, causing Kiba to glance back with a frown. Instead, Issei was thinking of other things. Wait, Issei would put his hand on his chin as he thought carefully. All of Razor's pieces are female, so he must be some kind of harem king, and he has his younger sister among those females. Issei froze completely, making all the women look at him with surprise, strangeness. Slowly, his face began to turn purple. Your brother is sick, Issei pointed at him indiscriminately, making Ravel blush for understanding what he meant. We must maintain the purity of our species. Ravel would scream, making Issei look at her like she was crazy. Ravel would quickly regain her composure. It doesn't matter. A low-class devil shouldn't and can't meddle in matters that don't concern him. Especially, if he's a reincarnated devil who doesn't understand anything about our species. Finally, the chestnut decided to forget everything that had just happened, oh otherwise he would be distracted from the fight. Isabella, finish him off. 
Ravel would command, causing a brown-haired woman with half of her face covered by a metal mask to step forward. I am Lord Razor's tower. By my loyalty to him, I swear that. Yes yes yes. Issei would wave her hand in boredom, making the women a bit angry. I'm getting tired of her ridiculous introductions. Issei's eyes would flash, raising her gauntlet against the woman as she pointed at her. Let's get started at once. The woman would just grit her teeth. You will pay for your insolence. The brunette pounced on Issei. The brunette waited for her until the last second, feeling that she had all the time in the world to avoid her. But she was not in her plans to do it. The woman tried to punch Issei in the face, being stopped by him in a quick movement, using his left hand. That is, the one without the gauntlet. With his bare hand, Ravel would shout in great surprise. I don't keep track of how many augments I go. But it must be more than twenty. So my strength, stamina and speed must be more than double when the first battle started. Issei would squeeze his gauntlet tightly, making a menacing metallic noise. The brunette watched this with terror and tried to quickly get out of the grip in vain, since Issei had a pretty good grip on her. She's a bit stronger than the last one, so with two hits I think she'll be enough. Issei gave her a strong blow to the abdomen, causing the woman to widen her eyes beyond power. Issei's entire fist sank into her stomach, forcing her to vomit a large amount of blood, staining Issei's face a bit in the process. The strong blow generated a small blizzard around her making everyone, even Kiba, they looked at it with great surprise. Just as Issei was preparing to deliver the second blow, the woman collapsed in his grip, causing the brunette to look at her in shock. A second later, the woman disappeared in a green flash. Issei looked at his gauntlet in great surprise. Quote ellipsis quote, silence had been palpable on the phoenix side. By just one hit, Ravel would think quite alarmed. No choice, Ravel would shout causing everyone to stare at her. Let's all attack together. The women quickly nodded and charged at Issei, while Ravel and the other bishop stayed behind, preparing magical attacks. Issei watched as the women quickly ran towards him, with absolute coordination. Even so, they were still slow. Issei ducked his head to dodge a blow, then moved his body to one side to avoid a blow that went to his chest then leaned to the other side to dodge another blow that went in the right direction, and finally finished with a big bang. I jump, dodging all the women and making them hit each other. Issei would spread his wings so he could fly, watching from above with a bit of grace. Your coordination is really good, but it's useless if your opponent is much stronger than you. Tiamat explained that to me, and I see that he was quite right. Two considerably large magical attacks would hit Issei's back without him being able to defend himself. We gave him, Ravel would say with a big smile on his face as he watched as the cloud of dust began to dissipate. Both women's eyes widened in shock when they saw that Issei's shirt had ripped, but he only had small scratches along the entire length of his back. Damn, let my guard down, Issei would think with a frown while she felt stings all along her back. Her face slowly turned purple. If Tiamat had seen this, surely she would have increased my training hours even more. Issei tried to look at her back, seeing that it wasn't a big deal. Good thing the buffs are already kicking in, oh otherwise that attack would have been devastating. He would think seriously, the tower, and the queen of the house of Rias have been eliminated. Both Kiba and Issei would widen their eyes in shock at what they heard. Issei would clench his fists tightly as he watched as all the gathered women were eyeing him warily. Issei gave Kiba a quick look, causing Kiba to nod as he continued his fight, even though the other woman was already visibly exhausted. Issei tilted his gauntlet towards where they were, causing them all to visibly twitch. A small red orb spawned at the tip of her gauntlet, causing the women to look at each other in confusion. Dragon shot. The small orb transformed into a large red beam and shot towards the women causing their eyes to widen in shock. Even so, Issei was a bit far away, so it gave them enough time to dodge him. Kiba saw this, and quickly separated his opponent from him with a strong clash of swords that sent her flying, then created another sword and slammed it into his stomach with one throw. The blonde wasted no time and buried his sword into the ground, causing a large number of swords to start sticking out of the ground at quite a height. The women turned to escape, but they were all surprised and cut by the swords that came out of nowhere, falling to the ground. They all widened their eyes in horror as the sonic and sword attack inches from their face. 
A huge explosion was heard at the scene, causing everyone to take cover from the huge amount of debris that the attack produced. A complete curtain covered the battlefield, making it impossible to see where the attacks were coming from. The two bishops were together back to back, waiting for an attack. A quick flash flashed across one of the bishops, her eyes widening in shock, only to be followed by a large spray of blood all over her torso, courtesy of Kiba. The dust began to clear, making it possible for Ravel to see Kiba. Now, who's outnumbered? Kiba would ask with a condescending smile, making the blonde even angrier. Issei would clench his right fist with a big victorious smile on his face. Issei's eyes blinked in shock as he saw how a huge fireball instantly impacted Kiba, causing a huge scream to be heard along with the huge explosion. Kiba would be thrown from the dust by the same magnitude of the explosion, having bruises and burns all over his body, plus his shirt and half of his pants had been completely ripped apart. Kiba rolled a couple of meters on the ground, until he finally fell completely unconscious, causing a green glow to cover him and disappear from the place. Ravel, go to Razor. He's taking on the Grimori brat. Issei would look up from her, clenching his teeth tightly at the sight of Razor's queen. I'll take care of this boy. Ravel would nod. Thank you, Yubeluna. Ravel would run towards the direction of the rooftops. Wait, Issei yelled, starting to fly in his direction. He skidded to a halt as another smaller fireball passed him an inch from his face. I am your rival, boy. Yubeluna would declare with a mischievous smile on her face. Issei just took a little distance, clenching his teeth tightly. I have to get this over with quickly. Issei would tip his gauntlet towards Yubeluna. With a normal one I won't be able to get through his attack. You must be careful with the amount of magic power you use. If you use a large amount of magic reserves at once, it will cause your mind to go into overload. As if you would go into uncontrollable dizziness, and you might even faint, like you did just now. Issei would remember Tiamat's words, causing a small smile to appear on her face. In that case, Issei took a deep breath as the small orb grew twice as large. It will be 20%. Yubeluna just watched the attack with a small smug smile on her face. Really? Do you think that will be able to rival my fire bomb? The queen would point her staff at him, creating a huge ball of fire. You got to be kidding. The woman launched the attack, intending to completely crush Issei. Dragon shot. His eyes widened in shock as the small orb morphed into a large attack. Both magical powers collided in the center, fighting for power for a short second, as the dragon shot past it with great ease. When Yubeluna thought of dodging the attack, it was already in front of her. A R G G H H H H H H. A great scream would be heard at the same time as the explosion hit, causing Issei to slightly cover his eyes from the huge blizzard that the attack raised. Yubeluna emerged from the curtain of dust, plummeting with her clothes almost completely shredded. A small blush shot across Issei's face at the sight of her breasts, but he quickly regained his composure knowing why he was here. Issei would hit his cheeks hard. This is not the time to think about breasts. Issei went in the direction of the school roof, seeing that some explosions could be seen from afar. Line jump. It's a shame that it must end this way, Rias, my love. Razor would comment preparing an immense attack of fire that resembled a tiny sun due to its size. Rias had her clothes somewhat torn, causing one of her breasts to be exposed, showing that they had been fighting for a while. Damn it, what can we do against his regeneration? Rias would think desperately, clenching his teeth tightly. He didn't have much time to come up with an idea, as the large fireball headed towards his direction. Although the attack was really big, its speed was completely abnormal so it was already only a meter away from the two women. Issei stepped right into the middle of the attack, stopping the massive fireball dead in its tracks with his gauntlet. The chestnut gritted his teeth when he felt how the heat and the force of the attack was pushing him to his limit with great speed. The attack began to drag him down, causing him to widen his eyes beyond power. Boost, 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 boost. B O O S T O O O O O O. That last increase indicated that he had reached his limit. Although he had managed to stop the advance of the attack, his gauntlet was beginning to crack, causing him to visibly worry. Promotion to tower. She would scream in euphoria, causing the symbol of the tower to appear on her body via a red magic circle. 
The gauntlet stopped cracking instantly. But even so, it still wasn't enough. Issei gritted his teeth in great pain as he supported his bare hand in the attack. He would take a step forward, causing the huge fireball to begin to recede. Oh, Razor would say to himself, quite shocked by what he was seeing. A big glint would run in Issei's eyes as he looked up. U u u u u u a a a a a a h h h yes ah. The great ball of fire was ejected into the sky after Issei's shout, causing it to crash into the barrier and generate a huge explosion. Issei fell to his knees breathing heavily as he clutched his burned arm in quite a bit of pain. They become second degree burns easily. Asia quickly rushed to his aid, starting to heal him. Good job, the nun would comment, making Issei give her a pained smile. Issei, are you alright? She would ask Rias, approaching him. Issei couldn't answer, as Razor's leisurely clapping brought everyone's attention. Impressive. I never would have thought that a low-class reincarnated devil could parry my best attack. Razor would exclaim, an arrogant smile on his face. You have quite interesting pieces, Rias. Razor narrowed his eyes with a dangerous gleam in them. Don't you think it would be really bad if something happened to them? Rias just glared at him with great hatred, making Razor shake his head in disappointment. First, you dare to interfere in the most important matters to maintain purity in devils, as well as upholding a grand pact between two families belonging to the 72 pillars. And now, you are willing to waste such valuable pieces out of reproach, knowing that your defeat is imminent. Razor would bow his shoulders, a smile on his face. You're a hopelessly spoiled brat. Razor would give her a lecherous look, making Rias feel disgusted. But I will take care of, controlling, you, when you are my wife. How can you say that, damn it? Issei would yell, getting up from the spot, already fully healed. The president should be able to marry whoever she wants, and for that very reason she acts that way. Razor gave her a somewhat surprised look, until he finally laughed. It doesn't matter what she wants or doesn't want that girl. Razor's face would instantly become serious. The devils are going through a very difficult time since the last war. There are very few pure devils left, and we need to increase that number so that our species does not end up disappearing. She is not the only one who will have to undergo arranged marriages, says her younger brother, and many other pure devils, regardless of their social class. Razor would raise both of his hands to emphasize her words as a smile appeared on his face. It's for survival, therefore, it's inconceivable that this brat would behave this way. Issei would lower his gaze, taking in everything he had heard. He was like that for a couple of seconds, until. And what does that matter to me? Razor would look at him in great astonishment. She was the one who gave me a second chance, so it doesn't matter what you say. I don't care if the demons will be extinct in one day or hundreds of years. If she's happy, it means she's done my job as servant. Issei would wave her hand disapprovingly, squeezing it tightly at the end. Razor looked at him seriously for several seconds, without saying a word. Brat, you're just as stupid as her. Razor would reply, crossing his arms as she looked at him with a big smug smile on his face. First, for thinking that the extinction of a species is worth your master's happiness. And second, for believing that you can defeat me. Razor would open his arms wide open, being a target everywhere. Go ahead and try any attack so you'll realize the difference between us. Razor would give a quick glance behind him, indicating that Ravel should get the hell out of the place if he didn't want to take any damage. Issei looked at him seriously for a few seconds. Aren't you going to dodge it? Of course not. You won't have to lift a finger. Razor would exclaim, mocking him. A small smile would appear on Issei's face upon hearing his answer. Then, the brunette would tilt his gauntlet towards Razor causing an orb considerably larger than the previous one to appear in her palm. I will take your word. Razor just nodded, his smug smile widening even more at the small magical attack he was about to unleash. It has to be a joke, surely her physical condition is her true forte. Otherwise, I can't understand how she managed to defeat my queen. Issei would give a big sigh, feeling like a dizziness was beginning to bother his entire body. I already used 30%. The best thing would be to use 60% in case things don't go as planned. Are you sure about this, partner? Deidre would ask with clear concern in his words. Issei would smile at his friend's concern. 
Don't worry, he said he wouldn't move. And if he tries to, this attack is much bigger than the previous ones. He won't be able to escape. Issei would give a small sigh, to then widen his eyes beyond power. Dragon shot. A great sonic wave was released from the gauntlet, completely obliterating everything in its path. It is dangerous. Razor slightly widened his eyes upon seeing the attack, creating an orange-colored magic circle that acted as a barrier. The attack hit the barrier hard, causing Razor to clench his teeth tightly as he used all his strength to hold the magic circle. After a few seconds, a small crack appeared in the barrier. That, Razor would yell in great surprise as the entire barrier began to crack, until it finally broke into a thousand pieces. Ah, Razor shouted with great force while being swallowed by the dragon shot, making it only possible to see how his figure began to give off a large amount of blood. After that, Issei threw Rias and Asia along with him to the ground. A second later, a huge explosion went up all over the place, causing the roof of the school to be completely destroyed. President, Asia, Issei would ask with great concern, not seeing how they were due to the enormous curtain of dust. We're fine, Issei, Rias would reply, getting up with difficulty while he rubbed his butt in pain from the fall. You blew up half of Kuo Academy with just one attack. You are impressive. He would add Asia, getting up from the ground in the same pain as Rias. When the dust finally began to clear, they could see that they were at the entrance to the academy, although the second floor and the others were. History. Joder. The three of them widened their eyes in shock upon hearing the voice, slowly beginning to turn around. That hurt like hell. Now I can see how you defeated Yubeluna. Issei quickly got in front of the two seeing that Razor was lying on the ground a few meters away. His entire body was surrounded by flames, except for his face. In it, it could be seen that she was holding a huge fake smile as a large amount of cold sweat broke out on her face. I'm never trusting myself that much again, damn it. That really hurt. Razor would think quite upset, looking with great attention at Issei. How does a low-class scum have so much power? Razor would very cautiously get up from the ground, something very rare for him. Issei felt how his vision became somewhat blurry, adding to the fact that everything was moving in a strange way. Razor raised an eyebrow as Issei staggered to the side. A sinister smile appeared on his face after processing what he had seen. Of course, a low-class reincarnated devil wouldn't be able to stand up after making such a powerful attack. Razor would seriously look at him instantly, making everyone tense up more than they already were. I won't trust myself. I'll finish you off before I regret not doing it. Razor would extend wings of fire on his back similar to those of the phoenix, flying at a great speed towards where Issei was. The brown-haired man watched with great patience as the fist covered in fire slowly approached his face, dodging it by the hair and receiving a small burn on his cheek. A small rumble was heard in the place, added to a huge blizzard. After a second, Razor would spit out a large amount of blood, due to Issei landing a heavy blow to his abdomen. Razor's eyes widened in rage and he wasted no time, kneeing him hard in the stomach that completely unbalanced Issei. Issei took a couple of steps back as his eyes trembled in pain. Razor wiped the blood from her mouth as she slowly approached him with seriousness palpable on her face. Issei would land a strong blow to Razor's face, causing him to expel a large amount of blood. Even so, the pure demon was unfazed by the pain and struck him hard in the face, followed by another, and another. Having taken a complete beating, Issei finally fell to the ground, half-conscious. Razor took a few steps towards him while looking at him seriously. He stood in front of Issei, looking down at him with great superiority. Issei, get up and use another dragon shot. Rias's scream would make Razor look down on her. This guy can't even move anymore. Razor would think while looking at him in disgust. Even so, he gave his all to defend his mistress. From what I understand, he was only reincarnated a month and a half ago, Razor would remember the great magic attack. And he can already do attacks like that, a small mysterious gleam would appear in his eyes. I don't like to admit it, but his power and great fidelity will come in handy when the time is right. Besides, if I keep having fun with him until I kill him. I'd be in pretty big trouble with Sirzex, and that wouldn't do me any good. Razor would slowly shift his gaze to Rias, making the woman jump from her murderous aura. If the Sekiryote is on the side of the devils, why delete it? 
It doesn't make any sense. Razor would raise his hand aiming to harm Rius, starting to create a huge fireball. Then, he'd better finish this stupidity right now. A huge explosion would shake the screen, leaving everything completely covered in dust. Sirzex, that he was watching the combat, he would smile with a mysterious aura around him. That's right, Razor, if we manage to get the Sekiryote under our control, all the plans we have in the future will come to fruition. Sirzex would rest his hand on his chin, making his mysterious smile grow even more. If everything goes according to plan, I'll have to tell the fallen angels after the wedding, which unfortunately won't work out for you, Razor. I'm sorry for you, but if I can make Issei fall in love with my sister, everything will be completely on my hands, Reigns. I will only need the small collaboration of my dear sister, who will surely agree to it. Ellipsis, 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 ellipsis. Final Dell rating game, Ganador, La Casa Phoenix. Even being semi-conscious, Issei could hear the voice that announced the end of the fight. He could only think of one thing before fainting. For some strange reason, he thought of her first, since Rius was in a much more compromising position. He didn't know why, but in that simple and small moment, he had only been able to think of her. In her hair, in her smile, in his eyes, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Tiamat. End of chapter. No, Issei screamed at the top of his lungs, sitting up on the bed in an instant, while a cold sweat broke out all over his face. The brunette looked around in great surprise. My room, he wondered to himself, beginning to like everything that had happened. I see, I lost, he commented, hanging his head in disappointment. Before he could think of anything else, he felt arms wrap around his shoulders. Issei, you're finally awake, she exclaimed the sweet and familiar voice with great joy, burying her face in the chestnut's neck. Tiamat, asked Issei, correspondent of Sin the Hug for the shock of the moment. One moment he would add with great seriousness. How many days have I been unconscious? Tiamat turned away from him and looked at him with great concern. You were unconscious for three days. Since you didn't visit me after the day of the battle and didn't feel any kind of emotions through our union, I was worried and decided to come to see how you were doing. I've been taking care of you these days, but unfortunately my healing it is not capable of healing internal wounds. My parents didn't say anything about your presence. Issei would ask, with great shock. Tiamat quickly denied. No. When I arrived, you were alone in the house. At that moment, the realization hit Issei's head. Right. They were going on a trip for a month. Issei looked at the window that was closed with great melancholy and pain, making Tiamat look at him with even more concern. I was afraid this could happen. I just hope I can find a way to remedy it. Chapter 10. A New Power. Issei watched in silence as Tiamat got up from the bed and went to open the window. Although his body and soul were there, his mind was elsewhere. Quote dot dot dot. I let her down. I couldn't return the favor to the president. Issei would think, clenching his fists tightly. How will she be right now? Partner. Deidre would interrupt his thoughts, making Issei pay attention to him. Asterisk I understand that you are worried about her. But keep in mind that no one came to check on you not for a single day, not for a single second. They just left you here to heal on your own. Instead, Tiamat was with you since on the first day, and she was the only one who was taking care of you and worried about you. Even though I and that crazy dragon don't get along, I have to say that Rias doesn't deserve even a bit of your attention right now, which she really does. Deserving of your consideration is the woman in front of you, opening that window, you'll have time to think about your mistress's situation afterwards, so make sure Tiamat gets the attention she deserves. Quote dot dot dot. You're right, Diedrake. I don't want to worry her any more than she already is with my negative thoughts. Issei would think seriously. When Tiamat glanced at him again, she looked a little surprised when he was giving her a great kindness. Thank you very much for taking care of me, Tiamat. You even came to the human world to treat me. I don't know how to thank you. Issei would look in another direction with an embarrassed expression on his face. You just have to keep your promise. Issei looked at her in great surprise when she felt her sit next to her. She was giving him a sympathetic smile. I hope you'll take me out to eat in this little town soon. That clarification made Issei laugh at her, 
while Tiamat was visibly relieved to see that the situation wasn't as dire as it seemed, since he was still just as sweet to her. Even so, that friendly and comfortable moment was completely shattered when Issei's stomach rumbled with great force. A flush of embarrassment broke out on Issei's face, causing Tiamat to give him a mocking smile. Anyone hungry after not eating for three days? The dragon asked with an amused tone in her words. Damn, I only realized it now. Issei would answer, holding his stomach with a slight grimace due to the great painful emptiness that she felt in her abdomen. Don't worry. Right now I'll go find some fruits to eat. Tiamat would comment, giving him one last hug, this time Issei if he could reciprocate. Really, I'm so glad you're awake. The hug continued for longer than they both thought, until finally Tiamat pulled away. I'll be back as soon as possible. Line jump. A few minutes passed, in which Issei did not move from the place at any time. An expressionless gaze decorated his, making it impossible to tell if she was feeling well or not. No one could guess, except for his friend who was inside his head. Asterisk are you still thinking about that? Deidre would ask, with a disapproving tone, not understanding why he kept worrying after what he told him. Quote dot dot dot. I'd just like to know how they're doing. If they didn't come to visit me, it means they're mad at me. Issei commented, looking up from her. Quote dot dot dot. I don't think I'll be able to see them face to face again, especially the president. Do you think they lost because of you? Don't mess around. They were barely able to contribute to the battle. You did almost all the work. But don't finish it. Issei would yell, angry with himself. I'm supposed to be the Sekariote, someone capable of defeating gods themselves, but I couldn't even defeat a high-class devil. He added in great frustration, making Diedreg unable to comment on it. You don't need to hide it from me, I know that I am the weakest of all your wielders. Issei would finish yelling, a point of crying from the great accumulated frustration. An awkward silence filled the room for several seconds, until finally Deidre decided to answer him. Asterisk it's true, you are the weakest wielder of all. Issei would clench his fists and teeth tightly at Deidre's words. Asterisk but you are also the wielder with the biggest heart of all. The dragon's words surprised the brunette. You are the only wielder I've had so far who only wants more power to protect their loved ones. All the others, only wanted power to dominate, allowing themselves to be totally corrupted by my power and turning me into a mere tool. But you me show you that you were different from the first days, you show you that you really are my partner. For that very reason, I know that you will not end up wasting away in power and you will reach levels that are even unimaginable for me. Deidre was surprised when Issei started laughing at his words. Don't you think you're being a bit exaggerated? You're one of the two heavenly dragons, it's impossible for it to reach a level that even you don't know about. Deidre would laugh, agreeing with his wielder and making the atmosphere turn to a much more cheerful one, abandoning the depressing vibe. Yes, you're right, it's just that I got a little carried away at the moment. Before Issei could thank her for relieving his frustration, a magic circle that Issei didn't identify appeared on her, instantly activating her gauntlet in defense. Sorry for the inconvenience, Sekariote. I have come to bring a message from Sirzex Lucifer, Rias Grimori's older brother. The Alvin woman who seemed to be a servant bowed her head in respect. Issei dematerialized his gauntlet and looked at her with wide eyes. My president's brother. The Alvin agreed. That's how it is. The woman took a small piece of paper from her hand that had a strange seal in the center. The wedding will be in a month, and you are invited. Issei took the paper and looked at it with great surprise. But Mr. Sirzex didn't ask me to talk to you just to give you the invitation. He plans for you to be the one to crash the wedding. Break. In. Issei's eyes widened at her in complete surprise. Correct. Apparently. You don't know that the second condition for speeding up the marriage date had been that anyone wishing to break into the wedding and take Rias's hand through a match against Razor is allowed. Is allowed. I commented, asked Issei in complete amazement, until he finally paid attention to one part in particular. Wait. If I save the president, will I be engaged to her? Issei thought, reluctant to marry her. When the wedding is in progress, I'll come looking for you to break into it. Issei cleared his thoughts and looked at her, nodding quickly. I'll think about that later. Now I just have to focus on saving her. She thought to herself with great seriousness. The woman disappeared in a magic circle, 
leaving Issei alone in the room again. He got up from the bed slowly with an expressionless look. Finally, Tiamat appeared in the place and looked at him with a raised eyebrow when she saw that he was up. Did something happen, Issei? Issei's expressionless gaze slowly transformed into a wide smile that promised to regain his pride at all costs, making Tiamat visibly shocked. I have a second chance. Tell me, how about you train me for another month? Tiamat's surprised look quickly changed to a sharp, pleased smile. If someone who wasn't involved in the conversation had seen her, she would have been a little scared. Quote dot dot dot. Can you bear to go a full month without returning to the human world? I didn't plan on showing my face until everything is sorted out anyway, and being there makes that job a lot easier. Has Los Melitas. Schedule jump. Six days. The silence in the Hyoto residence was palpable. In these last six days not even a noise was heard. Matsuda and Motohama went to visit their friend out of concern, but they found that no one was there, so they thought that their friend had accompanied his parents on the work trip, and that his cell phone had broken in the United States. United. Oh something like that. After Matsuda and Motohama left the place, two more people appeared in front of the Hyoto house. I can't believe my brother is making me do this. Rias commented with disgust, looking at the small house. His orders were clear. I declare Asia earnestly. You have to be as close to him and pretend you didn't care about the result of the ranking game. Spend the next few days together with Issei in his house so that he starts to feel loving affection for you. Asia leaned her shoulders with a small smile. Knowing everything Issei went through, it will be difficult to make him open up to you, even if he is in love. A dangerous glint would flash across Asia's eyes. You just have to kiss him non-stop when you're sure he's already in love with you. That way, we'll have him on our side forever. Rias gave a big sigh, and knocked on the door of the residence. I know, but it bothers me that I have to marry Issei. It's really repulsive just thinking about it. He whispered under his breath, Asia being the only one who heard him. Don't worry about it. Remember your brother mentioned that when you do your part, he'll help you cover up your relationship if you ever like someone. Asia whispered under her breath, causing a small smile to appear on Rias's face. You're right. What really bothers me is not being able to punish him, so that he feels the humiliation that I felt when I lost in the rating game. It's the Sekariote. It's unbelievable that he can't take a mere high-class devil like Razor. I would spit Rias with poison at his words. Asia just nodded as she understood Rias's suppressed actions, then raised both eyebrows in confusion. Don't you find it strange that I still haven't picked up? Rias looked at Asia with the same expression. You're right. Grafia had said that six days ago she was already conscious. Rias put a hand to her chin. It's very strange. The redhead concluded his thoughts, entering the house from the back. Line jump. Are you tired already? It's barely eleven at night. You were able to last another hour yesterday. He would declare Tiamat, giving him numerous thrusts without even flinching, while Issei dodged them or blocked them with his gauntlet with great difficulty. He had his enhancers at the limit for a long time, but that would be useless if he had already been training for more than fifteen hours without any kind of rest, except for lunch and dinner. Finally, Tiamat's sword ended up breaking the gauntlet into a thousand pieces, causing Issei to fall backwards with a thud. Tiamat sighed to herself, relaxing and dematerializing her ice sword. The dragon watched as Issei's chest went up and down with great intensity, seeming that he was about to get an attack. Let's stop for today. You can't continue like this, it would be counterproductive. Tiamat declared the end of the training, kneeling in front of Issei's face seriously, then giving him a tiny smile. Issei returned it to her, to then look into her beautiful navy blue eyes with great attention. It's been six days since this started. I never thought that training could turn out to be a real hell. Issei thought, having a little flashback of how it all started. Immortality. Tiamat would think aloud, rubbing her chin. Actually, it's not that far-fetched, since some devils are born with certain powers due to their lineage. From what you told me, their forces were quite balanced except for their magical reserves, which is really strange. Tiamat would look at Issei closely, giving him a deductive look. No devil would manage to hold his own in the high class for long if you're not a big deal. And apparently, immortality is what makes him a big deal. Tiamat would remove her hand from her chin and snap her fingers at him. 
the only thing you need to win is to defeat his immortality. You make it sound so easy. Issei replied with a roll of his eyes. Of course it's easy. Tiamat commented seriously. All you have to do is reach beyond. Break your limits. Break my limits. Issei would ask somewhat alarmed. That definitely didn't sound like an easy thing. Tiamat agreed. That's right. For that, you need to take your boosted gear to the next level. Balance breaker. Diedrag would declare, joining the conversation. Issei raised his hand as he saw the gauntlet materialize. If you don't mind, I'd like to explain this to the boy, since you only know about it from our clashes, Tiamat. Tiamat would just nod, letting Diedrag continue. Balance Breaker isn't something that allows you to break your limits, it's actually an evolution of boosted gear. Diedrag would explain, clearing his throat. That evolution allowed you to manifest a large amount of my power, making all your qualities greatly enhanced. The problem is that it is immensely difficult to release it the first time. You will need to reach a certain amount of power that, to be honest, you still lack too much. Issei would lower his head, somewhat dejected by the last part. But that is not the only condition. You must also have a huge trigger for negative emotions, along with a little compatibility with my soul. That is, a small compatibility with dragons. Pipe quote. Issei and Tiamat stared at the gauntlet in amazement. Compatibility with dragons. Diedrag started laughing out loud at Issei's concern, causing him to look at him like he was an idiot. The last point you have since you were born, thanks to the fact that my soul resides within yours. Then that shouldn't be a condition in the first place. Issei would yell, because of Diedrag's tasteless joke. Inside Issei, Diedrag's amused expression changed to a serious one when he heard his words. That's right. That's not a condition. Since humans don't have compatibility with dragons in the first place, he would think the dragon to himself, turning around to see his soul. His body of him was human before, there is no doubt about it. Diedrag narrowed his eyes seriously. But his soul. Diedrag remembered the purple flash in the battle against Rainair, and how quickly his boosted gear evolved, even though the required power was still below average. His soul of his is very strange. It's as if. He has a strange connection to our species. Diedrag finally bowed his shoulders with a smile. In short, Tiamat's words would make Issei pay attention to her. To break your limits you need to train, 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 and train. Since you're staying here this time, I'll make sure the training is much more rigorous than before. Those words would make the brown-haired man instantly serious while a cold sweat broke out on his face, swallowing hard. If the previous training had been very hard, I didn't even want to imagine what this would be like. And in the end, I end up being a living nightmare. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Are you okay? Tiamat's question would cause Issei to come back to the present again. You've been looking me in the eye for several minutes. Issei instantly realized that Tiamat's face was closer to his than he remembered, adding to the fact that she had also been looking into his eyes for all that time without saying a word. Yeah, it's just, I was thinking about how it all started. He would answer Issei, getting up with great difficulty, being supported by Tiamat. Is there something bothering you? The dragon would ask, supporting all of Issei's weight on her shoulder lovingly. Issei would instantly lower his gaze, indicating that Tiamat had hit the mark. You know, I've been thinking that maybe I can't beat him. As I guessed, the defeat brought him more trauma than failing his mistress. Tiamat thought shrewdly. What makes you think that? He's a high-class devil who was blessed by fate with his immortality. And I. Well, I'm the weakest Sekiryote ever. Are you telling me that you were not blessed by fate? Issei lowered his head even more at Tiamat's question. Do you consider that you were not blessed by fate, since an underdeveloped lizard ended up in your body, having millions and millions of options? The brunette looked up at him a little, slightly widening his eyes. There is only one other person like you in this vast world, and you will say that fate has no great things in store for you. No matter how weak you are, if you are the Sekiryote sooner or later you will become a world power. And that, that can only be achieved thanks to your destiny. Issei looked up in great surprise, seeing Tiamat's serious face that curved into a genuine smile. All you need to get there is a little bit of spirit. Tiamat rested her cheek against his in a very affectionate act, causing a small blush to break out on Issei's face. 
and I know very well that you have that spirit. So, Tiamat rested his free hand on Issei's hair and ruffled it lovingly. Don't despair him. Issei would heave a big sigh, then give her a tired smile. You're right. I just got a little carried away by the loss. Life is not a utopia. Tiamat responded quickly, looking at him penetratingly. No matter who you are or how strong you are, there will always be a moment in your life that you will suffer, because life is not perfect. And the really important thing is not how good almost all of your life was, but how many times it was a nightmare and you still managed to carry on. Tiamat's penetrating. Look changed to a big smile that she dedicated only to Issei, causing a pleasant little shiver to adorn the chestnut's entire body. If you ever hit rock bottom, I'll make sure I'm there for you. The same way you helped me when I was at my worst. I swear. Issei could only observe her with a small blush for all the intense emotions that the dragon gave off and penetrated the bottom of her heart. After a few seconds, she gave him a big smile and broke away from her grasp, feeling her strength have mysteriously returned. In that case, I swear too. The brunette extended his little finger, causing Tiamat to look at him with some confusion and surprise. Seeing that her now best friend didn't understand the interaction, Issei gently took her arm and slowly raised it up. If you ever find yourself in a delicate situation, I promise to help you again, and as many times as you need it. Issei linked her pinky with Tiamat, causing the dragon to watch the interaction in confusion, until she finally smiled and tightened the small grip even more. Tiamat lowered her gaze with an imperceptible blush when she saw that Issei was staring at her, with that incredible smile on her face that made her body shake with multiple incredible emotions and feelings. Thank you for making me feel so great. Tiamat transformed the small grip into a much firmer one as he gently took her hand. Issei was visibly shocked by her act, but she didn't have time to say oh do something. Are we going to take a bath? Issei blinked twice then sniffed his armpit and trembled slightly from the smell. Hell yeah, I stink. The brunette looked at her with great surprise and was suspicious when he saw that Tiamat seemed to be intact. Hey, why don't you ever end up tired or sweaty? A somewhat mocking smile appeared on Tiamat's face. She would start walking, leaving Issei a couple of steps behind. Because you don't make me do it, she answered, with an amused and mocking tone in her words. Hey. A throbbing vein appeared on Issei's forehead, rushing towards Tiamat, falling over in the process as all the fatigue returned to her body. Line jump. How come he wasn't at home? Sirzek's ever calm face couldn't hide the twitching of his eyebrows, indicating his anger. We searched the whole city for him, and nobody knows anything about him. Rias would answer, lowering her head in submission. Sirzek leaned back in his seat, thinking hard about what to do. Quote dot dot dot. They have to find it. If we don't, our planes might not work. Sirzex would declare, thinking carefully. If we don't find it, we can still resort to plan B. Plan B. Rias asked with a raised eyebrow. Plan B is not to mention anything to the Secreote about the engagement, indicating that we're not looking for that. We'll keep it a secret, until you manage to get his full attention. And if he asks to cancel the engagement, it would be best to tell him that he can do it after a couple of months. In those months, you will get close enough to him so that he begins to see the marriage as a good idea, Sirzex would declare with great calm in his words. The ultimate demon took on a sinister glint in his eyes all of a sudden, making Rias look at him carefully. If all else fails, we'll be left with no choice but to resort to plan C. Which, that would be a shame. Line jump. Tiamat watched in genuine surprise to see that Issei was standing behind her. Are you planning to bathe near me? Asked the dragon. That she was already naked in the lake, seeing that the chestnut was in the same place as her. I was thinking that if you don't mind my presence one bit, I think I should think the same. Issei would answer with some nervousness, starting to take off her clothes. Is your embarrassment over after six days yet? Tiamat asked with a slightly amused tone in his words, to then widen her eyes slightly in shock. Her torso of hers, the dragon would think, seeing that the exercises began to be noticeable greatly, and her marked chest and the four squares that protruded from her abdomen were the proof. Issei continued taking off his clothes, remaining only in the boxers. Unbeknownst to him due to the embarrassing situation, Tiamat wandered all over his body with wide eyes. Before, I've seen men's bodies that were much more worked, 
but for some reason, Issei's body makes me feel strange. Tiamat would look away from him with a small blush as she realized that she had been looking at him for too long. Why couldn't I stop looking at him? The dragon wondered, plunging half of her face into the natural hot springs to hide her blush. Somehow, this very normal situation for her wasn't exactly normal anymore. She was sure it was something she hadn't felt in over 2,000 years, but she didn't know exactly what it was. I just knew it felt good. Tiamat woke up from her thoughts when Issei got into the water, seeing that her face was much less nervous than the first time. Probably, he wouldn't take long to get used to bathing next to her, while that dense mist still covers almost her entire body, of course. Transition. 18 days. Come on. Keep running. He would order Tiamat, while he watched as Issei chased the daddy dragon with the intention of catching him. This had become a routine training since they always received visits from him in the morning. Issei would finally fall to the ground after running for over three hours. He wasn't using any buffs on Tiamat's orders, and for that very reason it seemed she would never be able to catch up with him. Tiamat slowly approached Issei, looking at him seriously. The chestnut turned on his back while he breathed completely agitated. Let's move on to the next one. It was Tiamat's simple words, causing Issei to become serious and jump up. 800. Issei would be doing some sit-ups, the last exercise before he had a friendly little battle with Tiamat. The dragon watched closely as Issei's entire body was shaking, but even so her expression didn't seem to waver one bit. Come on, you're only halfway through. Tiamat would exclaim, and then she would give him a small smile. Since the day we talked about his defeat, his mentality has strengthened drastically. Now, he not only has in mind to return the favor to his mistress, but also wants to win against that man at all costs. Her smile would increase even more when she saw Issei's completely focused expression. We already have another thing in common, we both love fighting. Although you don't know it yet. 1745, Issei would exclaim, he was standing on his head, doing completely insane push-ups while he kept his balance perfectly. Sweat ran down all over his face while his body trembled every time he went up and down. Even so, he seemed to have no intention of stopping. Remember that now there are 2,000. He would declare Tiamat, looking at him with great attention, being accompanied by his three neighboring dragons. Issei was watching with great seriousness as the three dragons surrounded him. His body was visibly trembling, and the large amount of sweat running down his entire body indicated that he was completely exhausted, as he had recently finished his daily exercises. Tiamat would be watching him, leaning against the mouth of the cave with her arms folded. The male dragon opened his mouth, causing a small blue magic circle to appear in his mouth, followed by a bolt of lightning that shot towards Issei's direction. The brunette looked behind him and reacted quickly, moving his body to the side to avoid it. Even so, she, had no rest as they all began to attack simultaneously. Issei would materialize his wings to be able to fly and dodge the three attacks with great difficulty due to exhaustion. He couldn't think of a strategy, as the consecutive attacks began searching for him in the air, forcing him to narrowly dodge them all. In fact, his last attack grazed her cheek, causing him to clench his teeth hard and become unbalanced from exhaustion, falling to the ground with a thud. He quickly tried to stand up, but his limbs didn't respond as he expected, causing all three attacks to hit him squarely. It's enough. Tiamat would order, running towards Issei with some concern seeing that he was nothing short of unconsciousness. I know this is very hard, but I have to make sure that this time you get the win. He would declare the dragon in a low voice as she caressed her cheek lovingly, beginning to heal him. The dragons looked at each other at the captivating interaction, but they didn't comment as they were used to it. After all, you have already come for more than two weeks in a row to visit them. A small smile would be visible on Tiamat's face when she saw how Issei was doing the push-ups with one hand, beginning to completely master the exercises. Although the amount increases every day, he gets less and less tired, this is getting very interesting. Tiamat would think, seeing him with a smile. Issei would be doing his daily kicks and punches but this time he was wearing a large block of ice covering his feet and hands. The movement looked much more hampered, but even so he managed to follow his exercises normally somehow. Considering that it's only been almost four weeks, it was pretty incredible. Quote dot dot dot.
I wonder how fast and how strong he will make his punches and kicks in such a short time. Tiamat thought, watching him with a smirk as he ate a piece of fruit, denoting his precious fangs. Issei would be dodging all the attacks of the airborne dragons with quite a bit of difficulty. He's already been in a state for over 15 minutes like this, and he looked like it would soon be over by the utterly exhausted expression on his face. The brunette widened his eyes in horror when he saw how lightning was centimeters from his face, making it impossible to avoid it. The impact was heard, so that later it was seen how Issei fell to the ground with a large wound on his right hand, indicating that she had had enough reaction to block it. Tiamat became alert when she saw this and was about to stop the training, but she was visibly surprised when Issei began to get up from the ground with difficulty, while a large amount of blood stained the ground thanks to the deep cut on his hand. The dragons watched in complete surprise as Issei slowly got up, then got into a defense position and looked at them with great seriousness. Her penetrating and reckless gaze is not in keeping with the great trembling of her entire body. Finally, Tiamat's surprise turned into a big proud smile as she saw that her future mate would not be easily brought down. Impressive. I can't think of another word to describe it. The male dragon looked completely surprised when Issei grabbed his head. Not only he was surprised, everyone was open-mouthed, even the chestnut himself. Quote dot 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 quote. A sharp silence adorned the environment. Until, Issei raised his free fist and clenched it with great force. Ah, the big cry of the chestnut made everyone get excited to a great extent. Even Tiamat had a gleam in her eyes that he had never had before. She felt great just watching him progress day after day. It felt great to have him by his side every day seeing how he is getting closer to reaching a new level. She was very proud of her progress, and very pleased with her company. If only, instead of a month, it would have been a year. The dragon thought, looking at him with much affection and longing. Line jump. Tiamat would deliver a strong blow to Issei's abdomen, forcing him to his knees, coughing in pain. I think it's time to finish. It's already past midnight, the dragon thought, looking up at the sky. The three dragons were watching the friendly fight, nodding from sleep. Only three days to go. Issei muttered under his breath, causing Tiamat to look at him, though I didn't hear what he said. I'll make sure to get there. He would mutter again, coughing under his breath. His gaze was shadowed, so you couldn't see the great amount of emotions that passed through his eyes. She helped me for this whole month, without rest. She took care of me and let me sleep in her house for all these days. Issei felt like his whole stomach was turning from the great amount of emotions that they hovered in his body. Curiously, there was no negative. That must be so, because he was thinking of Tiamat. He couldn't find negative thoughts coming from her. I will make you proud. I will make you see that nothing was in vain. The latter would be heard by Tiamat. Before Tiamat could tell him that nothing was in vain, that she enjoyed being around him every day, she heard something that completely confused her. Almantar. Your power-ups haven't maxed out, thought the dragon, Almantar. This time, Tiamat widened her eyes in shock as she saw that a red ore that gave off an immense amount of power completely surrounded Issei, while he slowly raised his gaze. Diedreg broke into a big proud smile inside Issei. Boosts are based not only on the wearer's strength, but also on their emotions. But, this is the first time one of my wearers has managed to get more buffs through positive emotions. He thought the dragon, then widened his eyes in shock as Issei's aura grew even more in another, boost. It was heard in the background. Will not be, the dragon said to himself, completely surprised by what was happening. Finally, Issei raised his gaze completely and the reddish energy flared up again even stronger, creating a huge blizzard around him. Issei clenched his fists tightly, letting the positive emotions fill him and take over completely. Almantar. Almantar. Almantar, 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 Almantar. At this point, the dragons are taking cover from the huge blizzard, while Tiamat could only stare at him in great surprise and bewilderment. B O O S T O O O O O. Just when everything seemed to be over, a small smile appeared on Issei's face. I wonder what smile he will give me when he finds out about my victory. The biggest smile that Tiamat gave him appeared in his mind. That smile had been the first of all that she had given him. 
that beautiful smile arose thanks to the fact that he decided to stay with her so as not to leave her alone. That simple smile. That simple memory. It was the trigger. Welsh dragon. Balance breaker. A strong reddish light completely surrounded Issei, making it impossible for his figure to be distinguished. The dragons shielded their eyes from the blinding light, while Tiamat could only watch in utter stupefaction. When the light finally dissipated, the dragon's jaw dropped to the ground as they saw a crimson-colored armor covering him completely, along with some green-colored jewels on different parts of his armor. The power that he radiated was so powerful and pure that a thin crimson aura surrounded him with great intensity. A small deafening sound could even be heard coming from it. Issei dematerialized his helmet, showing a completely serene and calm expression. In fact, Tiamat was looking at him with that very expression. After a few seconds looking at each other that way, both of them started waving their hands trying to gesticulate words, as if they were children entering a toy store for the first time. I can't believe it. They themselves are the most surprised. She would declare the male dragon with a smile upon seeing their reaction, which seemed to last for several more minutes. I never thought I would see Tiamat acting like that, the mother dragon declared, causing the other two to nod instantly. It's impressive to see how Issei has the power to make her so expressive. No one would believe that that dragon in front of us is the murderous and brooding dragon queen who has prowled for millennia. The male dragon added, watching the interaction with an amused smile on his face. End of chapter.